Ladies and gentlemen, Ron and Fez on Raw Dog. Serious XM Comedy Hits Channel 99. Yeah, buddy, it's, it's the Ron and Fez show. Look who was here. It was the breakout star of Moon Tower. Everybody was talking about your set down there, by the way. Uh, I mean, that's uh, that's one of those things where I don't ever believe it. Mm -hmm. I think people are messing with me when they tell me good job. I, I read on the Interbang, it was the industry buzz. Everyone's like, what this kid, he's popping. Oh! He's popping. That was, uh, it, I have to give all my thanks to Hannibal Burris for letting me open for him in front of a theater full of great comedy fans. Yeah, you, that's always fun, right? Yeah. Oh, my God. It was, uh, it was one of those things where after the show, you're like, all right, well, all the other shows can suck. Yeah. Because this one was, you know, a, a packed Paramount Theater. Well, last time I think we saw each other was at that Voss and Bonnie thing, and then yeah. they're doing another one. You're replaced and I'm replaced. Yeah, we're, we're replaceable. How yeah. messed up is that? What they, they just said, and I go, well, you know, why aren't Soda and I coming back? And they said, I guess fell short is the best way to put it. <laughs> and I thought, I thought you killed right. and I, I, I... I thought you were phenomenal. Yeah. So this bullshit that I mean, Rich and Bonnie are yeah. replacing I us. I mean, I'm signing shit for fucking two hours after you the show. What? You know what we should do? Yeah. Let's go find another celebrity comedy couple. And do the same thing, but with them. Do we got another one uh, out there? Who's another comedy couple that we can... Well, there's uh, Tom Segura, Christina Pajitsky. Per yeah. I love Segura. I would be honored Perfect. to open their show. All right, let them know the good news. <laughs> yeah, full you let package. them know. We got a full package. We've got an opening comic and a celebrity guest marriage counselor. Ron, I, I, Ron, I would go as far as to say is we are the David Lee Roth of that Van Halen. I like I like mm. what you're saying there. And their new replacements a simple Sammy Hagar. I even got a better idea now yeah. because it's you know this is the fucking 90s and there's changes happening all the time. <laughs> <laughs> what I want to do it is with a gay couple. Oh, that's uh, progressive. Fucking, yeah. Shit. Mm. Uh, th Michael Sam is with a little white guy, which. <laughs> oh, just a little uh, tiny piece of. Uh, mm -mm. No, uh, not a fan. Uh, <laughs> More in the biracial than the homosexuality. Yeah, yeah. yeah biracial bothers me. I draw the line somewhere, too. <laughs> yeah. But here's the thing. <laughs> I know Michael Sam is always fucking teasing him about dick size. I know he's just fucking laying his hog out right and fucking wrapping it around that little white dick. Do you, you know, think, like this. Do you think that's how they, you. Do you think that's how they solve arguments? Yeah. He just slowly goes for a zipper? I think he just grabs he's his like, throat. He's like, I told you, <laughs> the sconces can't be. And he's like, hey. Yeah. I just assume he does his black guy voice. Yeah. Hey, hey. hey, man. That's a good black guy voice. I got a little scared. <laughs> hey, man. We were just uh, talking about the cupcake, which I believe was a marketing incident, by the way. That, you know, oh, I'll, I'll make out with you while we eat a cupcake together. Um, Is and that now, what they did? Yeah. Oh, it was the cake, I thought. Was it cake or was he, it actual cupcake? He the cupcake in his face, uh, and then they start to lick it off each other I, nice and slow. I'm not against... Here's the... Yeah, there it is. Yeah. Here's the thing. It, now you're getting... Now you're going <laughs> too over the top. Right. Now it's becoming wedding celebration. Yeah. He looks like a... He looks like if they... Um, Casted a black dude to play Tiger Woods. Yeah, in a in a bio. He's got the red shirt. Yeah, too, and the, the black hat. Nike it's shirt Sunday. On. Right it's now, Sunday the Masters. He looks like Ray Lewis and the guy Ray Lewis killed. <laughs> <laughs> Ray Lewis and his victim yeah. kissing. Well, as soon as this was happening, I'm calling my dad on the phone. My dad's 87, so you know, change comes slow to him. He watches Fox News 14 hours a day. Would that make his ears bleed? Yeah. Well, I was actually going. Their balls are touching. I think their balls are touching. <laughs> I always like when like uh, when the people in the media take this clip and they're just so. Incensed by it, yeah. You're like, what? The? It's not even that big of a deal, right? I think the cupcake's only offensive to diabetics. Yeah, exactly. Is, is that written for you? Yes, good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a writer today, and I'm really, really like to keep up for it. Yeah, that's a pretty good. That's a fast writer. Yeah, he, yeah. Oh, it's good. He's just churning that's stuff. Cigars up. and scotch. That was his two hobbies. But <laughs> here's uh, the the beauty of this: we don't even know if this guy's going to play. We don't know if he's going uh, to make me, the team. I, As a 49er fan, I watch the Rams play twice a year. Mm -hmm. They play the 49ers, they'll play. 
They they do have, uh, actually, on the St. Louis Rams, uh, the son of professional wrestler Animal from the Road Warriors, whose shirt I'm wearing right now. Sure. Uh, James James Laurinaitis. Mm. He uh, plays linebacker for the the St. Louis Rams. Now, now, well, you're a sports Mm -hmm. guy. You understand Mm sports. 49ers. Is the window closing? Is the, they got that Eagles we're, thing of we're clo- yeah, that's what I was going to say. We're close, close to being the new Eagles. And that's yeah. a tough place to be. I think be. this is the last year where we make a push. When they almost fired the coach last yeah, year. Yeah, I I'm think like, there's too they, much. They, almost, you, they didn't almost fire him. That's the media getting bored mm-hmm. during uh, during the offseason and yeah. creating some bullshit that's not really there. Trent Baalke came out and said, we're working on his contract. The trade to the Browns was never a real thing. Now, let me say, I say that you're nervous because you're the media. But I, I also so want to say this is another reason why I love Dan Stiller. And yeah, I said it, but one guy about another. Because if Jerry would have said this to me, he would have he went like this. Ron, I understand what you're saying, and I like what you're saying, and I think in many ways you are right. But <laughs> Soder, Soder just cut bullshit. Yeah, I, you know what it is. And I said this in a bar yeah. one time to a lady while I was screaming at her because she was a Seahawks fan. Mm-hmm. Well, that's she, acceptable. But she said, uh, she said, "Do you have any ration in your brain? Do you have any rational thought?" And I said, "This is football. You leave the rationality and outside. When I'm cheering for my team, it's just blind, dumb loyalty." Well, sure, that's good. See, but there see, I did it again. Yeah, you did it again. That's my thing. That's my thing. That's a great way to be. But he Dan. has to do that but. as a sports reporter because yeah. now, because you got to understand, these guys can't be dicks because they have to get interviews with athletes, so yeah. they can't put the, they can't paint themselves. See, I grew up a Philadelphia fan, so we expect the worst. I think Cleveland understands where we come from. Cleveland, and, Cleveland's on such a different level of being ready to be disappointed. Yeah. They're almost like a, they're like a, a porn fetish that you didn't know existed. That's Cleveland how bad fans. it's been. We like, talked to a Cleveland uh, Browns fan that is selling his fandom, his loyalty. Is that from Cigars and Scotch? No, that's from <laughs> me. <laughs> Dude, that, yeah. That's on yeah. eBay. That's so great. Using and then you're, you're back to doing that. Just go for the... Swing the fucking hammer. Just play the well, hits. Blind yeah, loyalty. Play the hits. Re- blind loyalty really works best in sports and politics. That's okay, good. That that is. Is. I like that. Here's the late one. I wa- there won't be a son of Michael Sam. Oh, uh, I like that. Fucking great. That's a great joke. Yeah. <laughs> uh, wordplay. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, wordplay is the, to me uh, the perfect wit. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's the perfect. It's there. So you think Niners are done? I don't think they're done. I think there's a cracks in the front office, which is going to lead to done. bad things. Why in don't the you just say they're done? Let Dan know. I think he's in Dan's for a bad right. Season. They got a year to get it together, but after this, not. Are they going to lock do you, up the think, quarter, QB I, though? I think Kaepernick is falling off. I think his offseason. No, forget Trump. that the, the rapist stuff that he did. He didn't do anything. He kissed a girl. She got naked. Went into his bed. He left, knowing the situation was going to get bad. Yeah. And then she yeah. went and called the police and said she was Jesus and wouldn't leave the hotel. This is a crazy groupie. But did they, I want the Niners to be the new bad guys of the NFL. But here's the thing. Fuck everybody. I thought they always were. I thought Joe Montana was no, the fucking bad guy. That in the NFL. soft white hair of Bill Walsh. <laughs> That grandpa look of George Seifert? Bill Walsh, uh, Bill Walsh and Seifert both look like they were ready to, to just fly the Starship Enterprise out of them. Uh, I know. <laughs> they look, they that, were like above it all. I loved it. I yeah. loved it. It was the closest to male influence in my life I had growing up. Well, Joe Montana, still. Greatest of all time. And we say he's the greatest of all time because he won four games. Four and oh. That makes someone... The greatest of all time. So all the fighting that we ever do about stats and th- if if let's say Joe Montana was drafted by Buccaneers, yeah. would we be saying he was the greatest of all time? <laughs> Probably not. No. And yet that's what makes you the greatest of all time. Timing. Being at the right place, the right time. The, 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 uh, that draft, the Bucks had picked the first quarterback in the draft, the throwing Samoan. Yeah. Jack Thompson. That's and, true. And that could have been Joe Montana. Second greatest quarterback of all time. <laughs> yeah. Not only that, but uh, if you watch the 30 for 30 documentary, Elway to Marino, uh, they did a, uh, a small part where you realize when the Colts had Elway, they contacted Bill Walsh and the 49ers and discussed trading Elway for Montana. 
Greatest line in the history of sports, for me at least. Bill Walsh called him back 10 minutes later and said, I'm not done winning Super Bowls with this guy. Oh, and then he went great. and won two more. Now you got Kaepernick running the Georgie Porgy offense. Kiss the girls and make them cry. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, um, yeah, they're a little weaker. All right. But here's the thing, though. My favorite part of that 30 for 30 is that Marino cried before he went out and talked to the press. He actually went upstairs, <laughs> threw up, and cried. Because he was v- fucking picked so late. Oh, my God. Yeah, one bad season in Pittsburgh. And all of a sudden, he falls to the last pick of the first round. Now, for me, that's the best arm I've ever seen in my life. I think the greatest, I, don't, I forgot who's, and you probably know who said it, but my favorite thing I've ever heard about who's the greatest quarterback of all time, someone said, uh, if I need a quarterback for a season, I take Marino. If I need a quarterback for a game, I take Elway. If I need a quarterback for the fourth quarter, I take Joe Montana. And I thought that was like the my favorite way of summing it up because it made Montana look the coolest. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Joe cool. yeah. And yet... Not cool at all in real life. There's Don't no, say that. It's true. There's nothing. Oh, he's kind of a dork. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. Uh, you know, I can't speak against another name. Guys, no, so I guess I'm, like, I'm on mute. I, I'm on mute I now. Think, I think it was Artie who came up with the football smart thing. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And in the same way, I think he's football cool, but not a guy who, if he came in here, we would be like, oh, I want him to be cooler. Well, Joe Namath, on the other time, real cool. Well, Joe Namath is the cool. He was the yeah. Hendrix of the NFL. Yeah. He just did so much cool shit besides, you know, he didn't die. But, uh, right. but it's uh, Montana, the most disappointed I've been in Joe Montana was never a football game. It's when he took over broadcasting on NBC. Just and I was dope. like, come on, Joe. Yeah. Show a little life, buddy. So that's a, the Skechers ads are oh, that's they're a, not that's, worse that's than that. That's long gone. <laughs> that's long. I was, the NBC was the first disappointment. <laughs> Actually, the Chiefs trade was the worst, and then NBC, then the Skechers ad. But I think no matter what you're doing, if you can't get to sleep at night, and you're sitting there thinking about being a quarterback before you fucking drift off, it's Montana. You'd mm-hmm. be stupid to be thinking of anyone else. What do I want to be? Brett Favre throwing the ball like an idiot? I'm a, jo- I'm a Jeff George guy. All right. I just, I just want right. to be a journeyman with a strong arm. He does have a gun. He did have a gun. <laughs> and oh, he got lots of money. Yeah. Lots of money. Number they, one pick. They kept bringing him back. He was like the share of the NFL. Yeah. He kept coming back on like... They Played for like, the Raiders. Yeah, one night only. <laughs> uh, the, who would, I'm trying to think, if you could go best losing quarterback, who would you be? Uh, best losing oh, quarterback. Good. Do you go Jim Kelly? Do you go Bernie Kosar? I'm going to take it all the way back and just only based on a picture, Y.A. Tittle. <laughs> Y.A. That's a 49, that's a 49 or two. That, well, he was a giant he in that picture. He was a giant in the picture. But yeah. that thing that you're so beat down that you're being carried out. You know what I mean? Like Spider Rico. Yeah. Just, yeah. you got your Because I think you want to really go down hard. I couldn't be Jim Kelly. And uh, it's got to be too heartbreaking. It's too heartbreaking. There's what two about Kozar? But here's this is the thing that bothered me about Jim Kelly. I saw him after one of the losses. He came to a gig that I was doing mm-hmm. in Florida. We were doing a big thing on the beach, and he looked fine, and he was partying, and he was meeting chicks, and it made a lot of us like a little pissed off because we're like, doesn't this hurt enough for you? You know what though? Uh, Elway got that flack in Denver after mm-hmm. losing four Super Bowls, and uh, when they went through the whole Wade Phillips era. I remember being a kid in Denver, and all the complaints were that Elway, like, if they saw him out having dinner, they were like, how are you having dinner? You've lost three Super Bowls. And he was like, I don't know. I'm a normal person. Yeah. I love Jim Kelly. I love the, I I, I think he deserves more because the Bills franchise, they blue. They were the Browns. They were the current yeah, day Browns look how many great before players he showed up. Around them too. But he showed up, and I remember him in the Meadowlands and Klecko. Yeah, I, I love it. I love it. I love it. I'm sorry. I'm someone. sorry. Well, thank you for stopping me. Now I'll stop <laughs> it. But I fucking love it. I just love that fiery aspect. Of I don't think there's a quarterback right, that right turned now? around a franchise more it, than him. Any day you want, I'll have Klecko fight him. Oh, and it'll be, be over phenomenal. fucking fast. Klecko fighting Joe Kelly. Klecko is from the Highland Gardens in Chester, PA. He'll fucking fight anybody <laughs> anytime. <laughs> Any fucking time. That's what you're talking about. You're talking yeah. about PA quarterbacks, though. You yeah. got Marino, you got Montana, you got Kelly. Boy, Kelly, these are uh, all uh, terrible. No, he's from, uh, no, Kelly's from, yeah, he's from, from PA. P- PA. Yeah. Western. 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 They're all PA's. Western PA. It's yeah. all that. There's yeah. a bunch of Western it's PA. It's coal guys. miner grit. It's it's like being from Ohio, but you can read. That's the fucking thing. All right, um, man. The losing quarterback Great, thing is awful. Losing quarterback. It's an awful thing to even think about. Yeah, but it's fun to go into because I could even you could even go McNabb. 
Ugh. Oh. Ugh. But I mean, those, all that Campbell's I'd soup money. I'd kill myself if I was McNabb. Would you? Yes. I think, you know, I don't know, man. I think Asias, I think Boomer. Boomer's pretty you get your heart broken. There. You get your heart broken twice. And he should have won that fucking game. No one ever brings that up. The but, 88? Yeah. yeah. He should have yeah. won that game. 88 was a, uh, that was a big year. Go <laughs> Niners. <laughs> I think Boomer might be the thing. Might be Boomer. You think yeah. Boomer's the top? Yeah. I think uh I see I think Jim Kelly. Oh wow. Four in a row. Yeah. You're talking four straight years of having your heart broke at the last game of the season. By and by also by Troy Aikman twice. <laughs> you gotta hate that. Oh I would I don't want to be able to say it. Here's why I don't want to be. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I won't say it, but yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 it's too sad. Yeah. It too sad. sad. So dance is oh, piling Jesus. on. Yeah. yeah, piling on. Oh That's God! Cool. I think they'll the win this one though. They'll win. This one. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, fuck, Ron, you're one of my favorites. You know what? Just, um, just, <laughs> just gives a shit like that. You're one of my favorites. Neil, Neil O'Donnell. O'Donnell. Neil O'Donnell. Neil O'Donnell. That's a you're good talking call. Larry Brown pick six. <laughs> Snap that man's heart. Yeah. But I don't think Neil. I mean, Neil O'Donnell, in my mind, is the same class as like Jake DeLome, where it's heartbreaking. But I mean, you're right. Neil O'Donnell did throw that pick six to Larry Brown to end it. Mm. And blame the receiver. <laughs> I forgot like, he did that. Yeah. He ran the wrong route. <laughs> you know what? He was a. Uh, oh I was doing an unmasked one time talking about Marino, and I saw Marino come through the lobby here. He was doing something, and he went over to the steps and looked up at him, and then didn't take the steps, went over and talked the elevator. You know, and I just saw him shuffling. I'm like, why can't my body be like that? Why couldn't I be so have destroyed myself through sports that I can't walk up steps to Fez takes every fucking day, <laughs> even after eight heart attacks? Yeah, you're right. That's it, like the destruction you, that he took. You know, you would love to have that kind of limp. Oh, know? that's such... Oh, I remember yeah. being a little kid and thinking that limp was like that yeah. old athlete. Yeah, it's, it's also great. a war vet. That's a, like a war vet yeah. athlete limp. Old bot. I don't know. Yeah. I remember I did a, we had like our Little League version of football we were at, and Chuck McDerrick, who was an old Philadelphia Eagle, came. He was a guy that hit Frank so fucking hard that he put him in a coma. Frank yeah, yeah, they thought they killed Frank yeah. Gifford. Don't they, have, don't they, they have an award for him in college football because of how... I, the yeah, Bednarik, yeah. yeah. the Bednarik award. He came out and spoke to us, and all of our dads were like thrilled, and we didn't know what the fuck we were looking at. And all he did is just showed us how his fingers were broken. He would just take <laughs> different things, see what happens when you play the game, but and you give it everything. And we're like eight. But that's like, a total yeah. different NFL. That's guys yeah. selling cars in the off season yeah. mm-hmm. and like having beers with fans after the games. Like yeah. ah, it's like that's like you know what, the, the whole Plimpton Paper Lions thing. Yep. Like those guys yeah. were professional wrestlers, right? In their off season, the. Uh, the 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 bad boys the flyers when they were you know the broad street bullies they would tell people here's the bars we're going to in jersey after the game oh, that's awesome and so people could show up and buy them drinks yeah. you mm-hmm. know what i mean like they were like we're going to get there make sure we got plenty of people to buy us beers that accessibility yeah. to athletes was you know that was such i think a great time for sports because i mm-hmm. think in a lot of ways that cemented the reason why athletes get so much money now yeah. was cuz back then they were like i love this guy i drank beers with him my parents used to go out they were friends with a uh, offensive lineman from the Vikings that my dad grew up with in Oakland and whenever they'd come back and play the Niners my parents would just go out drinking with like mm-hmm. Fran Tarkington and like all these Vikings. Fran wasn't around it was it was mm-hmm. other guys but like the whole line they'd go drinking with the O-line in San Francisco that never happens no. one of my best friends I grew up with is the receivers coach for the Cleveland Browns and I barely have met any NFL players through him. <laughs> <laughs> he's a coach and, and, I'm like, and even he doesn't get to talk yeah, to those guys he's, like, yeah, he's like I don't know yeah, they, 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 it's bigger than life yeah once they're gone they're gone like, yeah. All right, all right. yeah, that that was that ex- accessibility that I think fans wish they had now, but we sh- we don't deserve it now. No, because yeah. people would just be fucking rude. You know what I mean? They'd be like, "You suck!" And but I think, I don't think some of it has to do is because they make so much money. Like back there, you would be like, you know, when they they used to call the. The the, the uh, Dodgers, the bums, they meant it as these are our bums, these are yeah, our guys, mm-hmm. we live and die with them. You weren't looking at someone who lived in a castle. Yeah. You know what I mean? So back then, even the sports writers liked them more because the, the players were getting maybe five grand more a year than the guys that were reporting. Mm-hmm. So they were they they got along with them, they understood each other. Now, if you hear about someone getting 
10, 15 million dollars a year. You're like, how can you not win, fuckface? How are <laughs> yeah. you tired? Like, you brought up McNabb. He makes me sick because he fucking was blown up in that fourth quarter. He, he you, was walking during you, a two-minute yeah. drill. What are you fucking mouth-breathing for? What a <laughs> hunk of whole shit. fucking life was for this. He might as well. Did he? I, I could be wrong, but did he or did he not put his hands above his head? <laughs> yeah. To, like, yeah. like the gym class <laughs> yeah. chubby kid running around the track. Open up the lungs. Yeah. Open up the lungs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Donovan, put your hands above your head. He's like, uh, I don't want to do this. <laughs> um, you can still hang out with sports stars as long as you're working as a stripper. <laughs> that's true. Hey, that's true. All right. That's, uh, um, all right. Here's Mark. Mark, you're on the Run Fez show. Ronnie, yeah. the strongest arm, I think, in the history of the NFL was Doug Williams of the old Tampa Bay Bucks. And the Redskins. Bounce passes off receiver's chest 30 yards downfield. I yeah. got to disagree and say Elway. Elway is pretty. Was, yeah. It was a real fucking gun. Elway had a cannon. Doug Williams did have a cannon, but I but, think Elway is like. He, didn't he break receivers' hands? The Favre did that. They'd break their fingers too. Well, Favre just yeah. fling anything. That, yeah. No, but yeah, he was hitting linemen in the hands. <laughs> <laughs> Marino actually threw a football like it was a baseball, though. Yeah. He had well. He had the Marino had the release yeah. that yeah. was just like mm -hmm. insane. But I, I think, I mean, now we're getting into, like, you know, this is a tough territory because, yeah, I, there, I think to be an NFL quarterback, you have to have a fucking cannon. <laughs> Unless you're Chad Pennington. Yeah, and then you just toss. Well, <laughs> I, I love that Randy Moss one time in an interview tried complimenting Chad Pennington, but actually nailed how shitty of a quarterback he was. <laughs> but he was like, man, when I was at Marshall, that was like catching rolls of toilet paper. And you're like, well, it kind of was because yeah. you're just <laughs> floating them up there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then letting the other teams come down. Now the strong arm player in the NFL is Aaron Hernandez. Ah, <laughs> there it is. Kaepernick's got a gun. I like that. He's a baseball guy, right? But he doesn't have touch yeah. passes. That's the problem. Yeah. That's why I can't do that over the shoulder. Hence why we didn't win the Super Bowl or the NFC Championship game. All right, there's a piece up on the eye bang that's going around <coughs> that. Uh, for some reason, Miley Cyrus has put out, and now Seth Rogen is answering to, because people were saying that that her left knee looks like Seth Rogen. And I'm trying to find this. I see it. Do you really? Oh, yeah. Can you make Where? it out? Yeah. How? All right, here, use the mouse to... Yeah, use the mouse to <laughs> point it out to us. All right, so here's... Do you have a laser pen? <laughs> here's the hair. You got the hair, I right? I know you, you put that in front of it, Chris, so we can't <laughs> see it. There we go. Right, we'll the go. hair... Um, oh, you you're almost hair? saying Jufro. The hair, you have the hair. That. Yeah. All right, you got the nose. Holy shit, I see it. Yeah, right? Oh, oh, wow. And then there's the eyes. Yeah. Eyes. The oh nose might be God. a little bulbous. It looks like he's got gla glasses on. Yeah. The nose could be a little, but you got a nice little pronounced chin, okay? You don't think that looks more like Fat Einstein? No, I think that looks like Seth Rogen. I think it could be, I think it's like a little Fred Flintstone into Seth Rogen. I think it's the Swedish chef and the Muppets. Mm. Is that yours or? <laughs> oh, okay, off the cards. <laughs> All right, good. I think it kind of looks like uh, the um, 40-year-old virgin era Jonah Hill, maybe. I mean, it's uh, kind of chunky. This is, um, yeah, but Jonah never had that kind of uh, nose. Maybe tobacco in, yeah. the, in, the, in the lower right. Uh, uh, or like a, or a broken jaw. Yeah, something like that. But, uh, you know, I think He's, we're there. I think yeah, we're totally there. I would say to, to get completely there, you'd have to go Seth Rogen mixed with, like, Kanye West car accident jaw. Like, the we're, weird we're, thing oh, is... the wire, Kanye. Yeah, exactly. There, there's a vine of this, because when she bends her knee, it's like... Huh. <laughs> thing. But uh, Seth Rogen wrote back to her that he likes the knee because it's a joint. Uh, See that? Yeah. 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 Play. Wordplay. Oh, yeah. we, wordplay. Needs, it's wordplay, but I think he needs his own cigars and scotch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is up on the iBang if you want to see it today. They also broke the big uh, story that Dan Soder stole, stole Moon Tower. I paid a lot of money for them to write that article. It's good, though. It's good that you're being known. Uh, yeah, you're doing Guy nice. Code uh, Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday's on MTV, too. You feel yeah. like you're in a Guy Code? You feel like you're all part of that? I feel like um, I feel like I can contribute a lot. I contribute yeah. a lot to Guy Code, but I put myself more as like a seventh man off the bench. I come Smart. in and get some rebounds. Smart. I bang down low. I take some fouls off the star players, and then I'm out. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's how I consider myself. Take a Juwan Howard type guy. Yeah, I I compare myself more to like Arvidas Sabonis after his knees went, and so the Blazers would just put him in to steal a couple rebounds. My favorite mm -hmm. six men are only the guys who come in and hit trays. Oh, I think the that's best. the best job. That's I'll who be I am. there. 
Boom. Yeah. Do you like it? Two seconds <laughs> left. Ray. This is why I think Ray. Yeah. Allen, this is why I think Ray Allen's going to play until he's seventy. Love Ray Allen. He's just what got that release. perfect release. He's just going to bang him out and then be like, "All right, get back on the bench." And total confidence. He's not excited when he hits. Not upset when he does it. Favorite NBA player of all time. Is, Ray Allen. Is he really? Wow. I've followed him since UConn, and I've loved him. And I'm a Nuggets fan, but I've yeah. all, I loved him in Seattle. I loved him in Milwaukee. I loved it. And then when the Heat thing, that kind of hurt, because I was like, don't go to the bad guys. But, <laughs> but look, like how, look how, I mean, he ba- they basically won that for them last year. Yeah. He yeah. was yeah. sick game last five. year. Game, game six, I think. Yeah. Six. Yeah, he nailed that game six, that big shot. I mean, he's got the perfect form. Uh, I always use him on Xbox too. I'm just like, give me him because yeah. I want to sit in the background and just bang fucking trays all day long. Uh, I don't like the OCD shit that he has though. That, I have that's, OCD, so that's I get mental it. illness to me. Is it? Yeah, that's would, weakness to you. Isn't I it? would lock people up. What, what are the OCDs that you have? I mean, dude, I got some fucked up ones. Yeah. Uh, I used to not be able to leave a place. I had to leave through the same door I came in. Yeah. So, like, if there was a second door to this studio, I would have to go through this, the door that I came through. But I broke that one yeah. about a couple of years ago. Uh, everything used to be... When I used to drink, this this uh, made my alcoholism go a lot faster. Right, yeah. <laughs> but everything had to be evens. So I had to have two drinks. Right. So that's why I'd have a shot and a beer. And then I ended up having fucking, like, <laughs> 14 drinks. And I'd be like, ah, <laughs> but it's even. <laughs> and then I'd go a lot on. of alcoholics are compulsive, to a lot. Yeah. And yeah. I think it, I, it really does. Like, there's, like, certain things I, I have to do before... Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I'm OCD, I'm OCD, so that's why I like Ray Allen even more. If you are you one of those people that if somebody asks you to do something, you have to do it. Like if no, I, because I get assholes when I tell them I'm a comic, telling them to yeah. make them laugh, and that makes me want to rip their throats out. But uh, no, so I don't do everything that people ask. Can you just do one thing? Just a little bit of Randy. Just, just the yeah, <laughs> the Macho Man, Randy Savage. Yeah, been a while, been a while since I've been on Ronnie Fizz. Yeah, put him back. From the upper world, yeah, the real top rope, heaven, yeah, <laughs> dig it, uh huh. Right. There was like, there's, I know, I don't know, I hate to ask people to do shit. Eight times, I, yeah, eight times, eight times, I was thinking he could have put a Randy there. Oh, <laughs> a nice place for Randy. I just want to avoid getting to like a yak off Schmidt off. Yeah, that's I all I have to do. I know, I know, but see, that's the thing. I'm like a baby. But see, I, I want you just most, keep doing it over. I have the most fun doing it for people unexpectedly. Right. Uh, a good buddy. Mind Michael Che, we were uh, he's hilarious. We were uh, we were backstage at Moon Tower, and he had these obnoxious <laughs> Nikes on. Where I was like, "Are you really f- fucking wearing <laughs> Slim Jim Macho Man era <laughs> shoes?" <laughs> I'm like, yeah, the Moon Tower Comedy and Oddity <laughs> Festival. Yeah, <laughs> telling jokes with setups. Huh? <laughs> uh, yeah, and then he fucking uh, making him laugh. I was like, "All right, right this, this is good. Cool. <laughs> yeah. So that's what it is. It's always that. And I used to do the Andre a lot more, but um, my girlfriend really hates it. <laughs> We'd be like, I want to touch the balls. <laughs> She's like, please don't do that. that. It sounds like you're slowed down. Yeah. <laughs> but the Macho Man, I'll always do that. For you, Ron, yeah. time. I think I told you I saw Andre naked before, so my life is good. My life is did he, good. And I forget if I asked you, did he have a huge piece? Mm-mm. It was a normal size, right? Well, he was sitting down, and I didn't want to walk over. He was just playing cards. Naked. Who are these uh, people coming by, Fez? I think they're in like we got a big tour group out there. You know what they're, they're, they're from. That should be open. So. That's who I was with in the lobby. That's why I got lost. Oh, is that right? Because I'm a grown man who wears a backpack. Uh-huh. <laughs> And I was with a group of college kids. <laughs> and then the security guy in the front goes, you're not with them, are you? And I was like, no, 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 no. And then I realized I looked like a single mom who's going back to college. <laughs> I had that right. older person look where I'm like, hey, I learned, you know, I, I did drugs in my 20s, but now I'm here to learn. <laughs> hey! They saw me in the lobby. They don't even Is that know. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, what are they hilarious. doing, Chris? I don't know. I think University of Michigan student. Oh! oh. Hail to the victors, right? Yeah, you're a Notre Dame guy. Yeah, yeah people are going to hate that I yeah. just said that. But I, I just want to say go Buckeyes just to piss people yeah. off. Right. Don't care about the Big Go team. Irish, right? Yeah, yeah. go Why Irish. are they all here from Michigan? Uh, they're taking a tour because there's uh, new intern classes are starting soon. Oh. But they, they're all going to be Michigan interns here? No, this is just them checking out the facilities. They're oh, on a class fuck? trip from New York to New York, and this is part of it. But the, oh. it's over. The fucking college is over. What college is over for them? Yeah, or I mean, just this in time general? of year. The semester's over. Yeah, the semester's over. These are the kids. This is can... this is why. 
uh, this is how you get CEOs. These are the kids that right. go in okay. and they do shit. Like right now, yeah. guys like me and you, if it was college, we'd just be getting drunk or getting fucked up. You know, like if, I was, that age. if I was in college, I'd bang that one right there. Which one? Like the one there with was the a little blonde, crazy hair. Yeah, yeah there yeah. was a blonde yeah. that I was in the elevator with tonight. Mm. They're here because they don't want to be in the same state as Detroit. Okay, okay. That's good. all right. Yeah, that's good. Hey. That's you know, let's topical. attack. Yeah, let's attack them while they're down. Because <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah, that city needs to be made fun of. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know. It's not. It's already bad enough that your future was predicted by RoboCop. <laughs> Accurately predicted. <laughs> yeah. Crack factory. I actually, it didn't even turn out as good. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when they made that fucking Escape from the New York movie. Yeah. No one thought that wouldn't happen. Everyone thought, "Yep, that's where it's going." And then they missed the biggest one because the Twin Towers. He lands on the Twin Towers. Oh yeah. And you're like, Ugh. today they had the memorial. I know. They opened it up. It was, uh, is, is it true? What's the Rudy Giuliani thing? That there was a, uh, I think that was a joke. I think Mike Lawrence made a joke. But what was the I think he said there was like an animatronic Rudy Giuliani, but I'm just such a, I'm such a dumb stoner that I just saw it in passing and I was like, ah, that's something they probably did. Oh, then you're repeating it to yeah. people. And then I'm so like, fucked up down there. <laughs> <laughs> Can you believe that? Just getting yeah. high with my neighbor. Like, right. I can't believe they do something like that. And then I go on Twitter like cancel yeah. the memorial. <laughs> right. I would always do that, those kind of awful lies when I was a kid, thinking yeah. it was funny and later. But one time I uh, go walking up on a street corner, and there used to be a house that two older dudes like lived in, and some and there's like fucking fifteen of us standing on just stand on a fucking street corner like kids. And someone said, where's this girl at? And I go, oh, you didn't hear? Those two older dudes fucking raped her last night. <laughs> because I was a really funny, witty kid. Right? Yeah. You know, and I would come up with a premise like that. Oh, they raped her last night. And then I just let it lay there. <laughs> it's a good, it's a good bit. Yeah. yeah. Thinking, how dumb are they? So about a half an hour uh, later, mothers start coming out and grabbing fucking kids. Like, come on, let's go. You're leaving. Somebody had went home, told their mom. Mom started calling each other. They start fucking up. But even while this is happening, I'm not fucking catching on to a thing. <laughs> Cop cars start to slide up to the house, checking on shit. And uh, oh my yeah. god, can you imagine being one of those older yeah. dudes just like having a beer in your backyard? You're like, hey man, the, the, we're, we both got through divorces, <laughs> yeah. but everything's gonna turn around now. It's whoop whoop. <laughs> if you're a fucking middle aged guy. You can't live in a house mm -mm. where there's kids in the neighborhood. You have to move into an apartment or into a city. It, you look like a nut living in a home by yourself. There was a guy in my neighborhood who's he got divorced and his family moved out and it was yeah. just him and it was the most fucking depressing thing. Right. Riding by your bike and you're like, Hey Rich and he's like, <laughs> yeah. and like, They're not coming back, Rich. <laughs> Kill yourself. <laughs> Kill yourself. <laughs> you moved on. Why even bother with those gutters? Yeah. Yeah. It's Who true. are you well, cleaning them for, Rich? It's true. You're not gonna have Christmas here this year. <laughs> you have to go to your brothers. <laughs> I'm just riding by my bike saying realistic, <laughs> horrific shit. Who, who would actually mow their lawn unless yeah. a woman told them to? You better start drinking gin, Rich. Yeah. It's your only way out of this dark emotional <laughs> hole. Bachelor pads in your 40s are just sad. It's true. <laughs> that's a statement, that's not a, a joke. That's not I mean, joke. I kind of like that. A statement. I like that Fez is coming with statements. Yeah. <laughs> Blindly reading. I like that. I like that Fez now has pointed opinions. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think I, if I ever was an older guy, I'd be like, all right, Look, good apartment. That's the memorial where the, it just looks so. There, there are things that try to act like it just happened, and then you're supposed to go down there with it. Oh, no that. one from New York will ever go to this. It'll just be for fucking tourists. They have entire storefronts down there. Jesus. Like, like they, I forgot what store. Like, I'm the Ameri we have the American Eagle store from that day with all the. Oh, there's the pictures of everyone that's dead. Are you fucking dead. serious? Yeah. yeah. With, like, they the really mannequins. saved all that shit. Yeah. yeah. We are so. Morbid, right? As a culture, that we're like, yeah, yeah. Can you show us that? Well, that's like the Pearl Harbor Museum. Yeah, like everyone says, I've never been to Hawaii, but I've had friends that sit there and they say that Japanese people go and take pictures in front of it and shit. Fuckers, and like, balls. That's just Fuckers. balls. That store looked like that on nine ten. 
No. You know something? <laughs> you yeah. fucking silly. Fuck? You know something, yeah. Fez? Fuck. I know you're just reading it, but yeah. I still blame you. <laughs> <laughs> At the end, you are the one launching that. You're yeah. the one pressing that button to let those go. <laughs> it just seems, I, I don't know, man. Like, yeah, yeah. It's, it, We needed to do a memorial, but I don't know. I don't know if an underground memorial, it's too it's fucking fucked sad. Up. It's fucked up. Yeah. It's think? like being in a tomb. Really, it's like saying, here, walk into a tomb. Yeah. Here you go. These are all these people died. And then it's going to be a great place uh, for truthers. Uh, and Fucking shit. They said Bush actually went up there today, and he goes, the first time I even heard about 9-11 was two days before it happened. And that, <laughs> he goes, I'll never forget. I didn't even know we were planning it. Never knew it. Knew it. You scared the shit out of me. I got the run-through yeah. on the 8th, and I was like, I don't know, man, a Tuesday? We're going to do this on a Tuesday? How's the weather? He, yeah. said, he said he couldn't sleep the night before. Oh, so man. fucking How nervous. fucking funny would that be if Bush fucked up and admitted that it was an inside job because he's just casual he's like i don't know Dang it. no we did it what oh no i was i not supposed to oh god no oh, ronnie's gonna be pissed see he would do that if he had my sense of humor at fucking 11 years old yeah. oh man can you imagine if, if he or if he went the opposite way and just didn't give a fuck and right. just started saying ridiculous shit like yeah. that he's like yeah i did that not only that i went into iraq for oil even if he just if they if he showed up today and he hadn't shared and he's like, they made me. <laughs> Believe me, there's nothing. Oh, the they going to kill my f kids. Mr. President, who? <laughs> oh, there's mostly the tobacco companies. And the Jews. <laughs> It's always <laughs> Jews. <laughs> this comes with the most stereotypical. Uh, but honestly, damn, it's the Jews. Uh, you know who it was. You're all right about them. Yeah, he just goes like this. Uh, mm -hmm. the, <laughs> the animatronic Giuliani, he's in the conspiracy wing of the museum. That's good stuff. Okay. That's good stuff. I like it. Yeah. These are very, like, like, good monologue jokes. Yeah, they are good monologue. Yeah, like, you could give them to every late night host yeah, yeah, yeah. to do. We did a thing, and we got lazy, but we were doing a thing for a while where we were pulling everybody's jokes, and you had to guess which show they came from. Oh, that's fun. It's impossible after, like, two weeks or three weeks where even if you saw the show, you don't remember the jokes. Like, think, Leno had that show for 19 years. And if you said, name me a Leno joke, it would have been something that he did before he did that show. You know what I mean? Because he was, no one's going to believe me, but he was a very funny guy. But after that show, every joke was so interchangeable. Well, yeah, that, because he had to go, Leno, even though Leno was a great comic, mm -hmm. eventually what he did, which stopped him from being an all-time legend, was he went the corporate route and was like, mm -hmm. all right, I'm going to do the safest jokes that get the most he wanted to hit the most people right and that's not what comedy is comedy you got to be the funniest and sometimes you don't hit all the people yeah so that's why all of his jokes were like and you see this uh, can you believe it <laughs> this is happening <laughs> my soul's dead but uh, you know a lot of people like this uh, uh, well, look someone made a misprint in the newspaper huh? and all my fans still read the newspaper it's like yeah no one gives a shit Jay <laughs> no one gives a flying fuck and Conan makes his his monologue jokes funny because Conan's silly so Conan's silly while he's doing right. the jokes. But I mean, I have friends that write for late night shows and it's fucking hard. You gotta yeah. have like, you gotta basically create 40 jokes a day. Mm -hmm. I write once a week. <laughs> like yeah. I, I would much rather watch TV and not, you know what I and mean? And most of the time you're confused whether Mike Lawrence was kidding or not. <laughs> start your I'm joke. basing jokes on facts that aren't even facts. <laughs> I'm just writing things. I'm just diarying out my mouth. But maybe I should do that. Maybe I should go the Jay Leno route. Dan Soder at the stand tonight, 8 and 10. Uh, oh, on Saturday. Yeah, Saturday. tonight and Saturday. Tonight but, uh, and Saturday. But, but let's come to, let's come to the Saturday shows. Because right? I had tonight a race. Yeah, no, I, that was my bad. I told uh, I told. 8 and 10 choose. Saturday. Yeah. Food's good there. No one ever says it. No one ever it. So phenomenal. Nice. No one ever brings it up. Food's good there. The tuna. Yeah, tuna is so good. They have a, They do a cheeseburger dumplings. Is Tonight the Lights Out show? No, that's uh, that was yes, that's tonight. Wait, is tonight Wednesday? Yeah, it's damn above uh, Stan New York. Yeah, it's Stan Labs. Yeah, Labs. 
the Luis Gomez, yeah, the lights out show, yeah, we're taking comedy to a new level. <laughs> yeah, fucking good for Lou. Really doing show in the dark. <laughs> in the dark and blindfolded. You're basically going against all the basic <laughs> principles of comedy. But God, no, it, it fucking the lineup's fantastic. Yeah, so I'd go see it. Well, everybody wants to be first. Right, who, who's on the lineup here? All right, uh, Mike Lawrence, Joe List. One of Have you had Joe List on the show? I yet? have not. Holy shit, funny! Like Joe yeah. List is one of he's one of my best friends, but also one of the funniest comics I think out there right now. Well, uh, so quick, Yamanika Saunders. Uh, who else is on there? Dave Smith, another fucking really funny dude, and Big J Ogerson, one of the best. Well, Lewis said Big J canceled. Oh, did he? And then Mike Vecchione, I believe, is going to show up. Tonight. My roommate and a hilarious comic. He's Last time Vecchio was in here, I was laughing so hard. He's he, so funny. He is so different from everyone else. He comes at it from a whole different angle. I've lived with him for three years, and, mm -hmm. I'll, and I say it every time. He's got vigilante energy. <laughs> <laughs> he's, got, he's got, I'm yeah. going to clean up the streets with violence <laughs> energy. Uh. It really is the way he sulks around the house. Like, I'm watching, like, old <laughs> wrestling events, smoking weed in the living room, and he's just doing knuckle push-ups <laughs> in his bedroom under a Jesus picture. It's yeah. just like, he really, he lives, he lives his life like he's Cobra. Like, he's Sure. <laughs> it's it's always the origin story of Batman with him. <laughs> yeah. He's just always going through that. I remember where I was. <laughs> Who is he? <laughs> That's where he is. <laughs> uh, but f honestly, I mean, ins an insanely funny comedian, Mike Vecchione. Oh, unbelievable. I mean, that lineup's great. Joe List, Dave Smith, yeah. uh, Mike Vecchione, Yamanika, Mike Lawrence, Lewis. Posted, uh, you know, but it's just uh, it's in the dark. It's going to be in the dark. You're going to be very dark there. Lewis said he thought of the premise during Hurricane Sandy. He originally planned to flood the club. Nah, <laughs> it's upstairs, so that would have been harder. Come on, Fez. Not basement comedy. <laughs> it's dark. <laughs> this fucking crowd. thing fell apart really fast. No, your architecture. Yeah. I think I don't know. I think he's. I like it. I loved it for a while. Now I totally hate it. Really? <laughs> yes, no, you flipped? Yeah. But I like to flip about most things. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's fun to play it from both angles. I'm just. There's Tim. Hey. Hi. Yeah. He's liking things. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. I think I'm in trouble. No, that's the suits. The suits kind of come by. They're like, yeah. Uh, good. <laughs> they, give mean, you, uh, they give you yeah. the little feed. Yeah. Like, yeah. Go. yeah that, mm, mm, mm. Here you go. Here, monkey. Here. <laughs> Uh, I bet they went on a tour mm. in May after college was done. You talk about being fucking soulless. I mean, those fucking those two guys would kill each other over a fucking lunch. Or is what's I think the businessmen you have to ride the elevators with here? That yeah. You could just smell. You know who those cocksuckers are? NBC. Is NBC. No, I thought yeah. they were over there. No, they're no. over here too. Seven floors. There's there's a, got, but there's, there's a banker. Floors. There's a banking. Oh yeah, that's the um, Morgan Stanley. Morgan Stanley. Those guys. I, every, I've been in here when I, I think I was going to do O and A. I might have been coming here. Mm -hmm. One of these guys' conversation. I almost got into a fight. Last time I did O and A, I'm checking my email as I'm in the elevator, and I don't realize I'm dumb. I don't realize we're at the ground floor. Elevator door starts closing. I go, "Oh shit!" Like this, and uh, this guy goes, "You dumb motherfucker!" He said no, that. He, he goes, "You dumb That'll motherfucker!" Be it. So I hold the door and I go, "What the fuck did you just say to me?" Good. And you could tell he thought the doors were gonna close, and right. he's like, Ugh. "Right." I go, "What the fuck did you just say to me?" And the guy goes, oh, "I mean, you just, you're on your phone. You should really look up." I go, "What the fuck did you just say to me?" And he's like, "You just should just really look." And I go, "Do you want to go outside, Rand? We're two adults. We can go punch on each other outside." He's like, uh, just you fucking, you know, uh, keep your. Uh, and I was like, yeah, and then the door closed. And I was like, fuck you, man. I will beat your ass for 31 floors. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to hit everyone on the way up. Every time is a punch. That, <laughs> and you know what it is? I waited on guys yeah. like that for so many years because I waited tables in Midtown that you just see that fucking arrogance of, I'm a yeah. businessman. I'm a, right. I work in finance. Fuck you. Right. They're the new drug dealers. They are. They're, they're the people who fuck this nation senseless. And then we go, we're sitting there every day going, good, the, biz, the stocks are up. What's up? Yeah. The, are the fake numbers up or are the yeah. fake numbers down? Yay. Good. It's like the, every fucking day in America is like the last fucking page of 1984. <laughs> where you're just like, I'm so proud to be here. <laughs> Sucker. You want a rat up to our face, you fucking prick. Oh, God. You know what the best was? I remember 08, I was a waiter when the big when the big drop happened. Yeah. Uh, Bear Stearns was like two blocks away from the 
restaurant I worked at, and all of a sudden there was just this fucking wave of finance guys getting hammered at like 2.30 in the afternoon. And I'm like, I, I'm a waiter, so I'm like, oh man, I'm yeah. gonna make fucking good money today. Yeah. And then someone comes in like, did you hear the stock market dropped? And they're like, one guy was throwing up in the bathroom at like 3.15 because he, he fucking just like threw back like eight margaritas. And I was like, all right, good. Margaritas. You're in there, you're just cutting up fucking credit cards. Sorry, <laughs> sir. This is already Sir, I just got a call from the Federal Reserve. <laughs> Clip. You yeah. get in the elevator with the Morgan Stanley guys. They smell like other people's crushed dreams. Oh, that is, that's, that's, that's good. Another that's good. statement I love. <laughs> yeah. I'm back on. I'm back I, on. I think what we need to do is we need to shift Fez into making hilarious statements. Yeah. The joke jokes out. I yeah. like funny statements. Also, I think you ought to curse a little more. Funny statements and cursing. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> I like he said it like a cook. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, we're out of broccoli! 86 broccoli! All right, yeah, we'll be back. <laughs> Move the fish. It's the last day. Move it! You guys better push the special! All right, we're back. Uh, yeah, those. Uh, and so I don't know. Do you ever get in the elevator with these guys? Yeah, I hate all these fuckers. But I'll sometimes, like, a lot of times they'll go like this. Excuse me, could you put out your cigar? And I'm like, no. Um, trying to fucking smoke before I hit the street. <laughs> trying to get it up. <laughs> I'll his back, lady. But it was funny being on anything with Hicks because he talks as if everyone in the world <laughs> talks like this. So I'll be in the elevator. It'll be packed. And it'll go to me. Oh, what did the fucking cunt say about? <laughs> And I, I just think I just see these people cringe. Uh. I know they're never with anyone as sloppy or as yeah. queens raised as him. Well, MB, MB, we knew someone who worked in NBC. They said they'd talk shit about me. They said it's the guy who smells like cigarettes. He's constantly going on the radio, <laughs> fucking with us. Yeah, because we hate them because they stop. They do a local. They yeah. like go from twenty three to twenty five, and before those fuckers came in, we used to go just straight up. Fucking express. But he he just stinks like <laughs> cigarettes and. Uh. Versus, I love that. Yeah. I love that they don't like you because you smell <laughs> like cigarettes. <laughs> they don't. They, they fucking talk about me. They can fuck yeah. themselves. Yeah, there's that burrow yeah. anger. Yeah. <laughs> Get that burrow anger yeah. out of you. And it? then it's back on the fucking bridge and home you go. <laughs> <laughs> the wrong queens. Chris was trying to make conversation with them. He said, did you hear what my asshole cunt financial planner said? <laughs> <laughs> that that's, that's great. That's, that's it. Good. That's my favorite one so far. Yeah, that's good stuff. They, uh, <laughs> oh, that's got to be, yeah, they, um, I forget who was telling me the story, but they, I guess they always light up when celebrities are in the elevator. Like oh, the, sure. Ah, oh, yeah. Yeah. Some dude fucking played uh, uh. Blurred Lines for Robin Thicke oh. in the elevator. Oh. Tapped him on the shoulder and said, hey, this is your song. Was what? he like, oh my God. What are you supposed to fucking say yeah. to that? He was like, that's And great. he started playing Blurred Lines, though? From his fucking phone. But I bet you know what it he was? It is in Blurred Lines' face. That's mm. such a, I'm a boss of a company, and yeah. everyone has to say yes to what I say, that they don't understand that they're socially retarded. That people will laugh normally at stuff yeah, like, yeah. like, this is great. We're doing Pirate Day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's almost Christmas. We're having an ugly sweater party. <laughs> oh, fuck you. And that fucking office can mentality. You, can you imagine, like, if you found out comedy was just destroyed tomorrow and you had to go back and work like human beings do? Wouldn't it be awful? Absolutely not. I would join a militia. Or <laughs> become a mercenary. I wouldn't <laughs> fucking go, I wouldn't go back to that fucking world. I can't go back being the civilian. Go back just wearing, like, going into an office being like, yeah. Hey, Greg! Alright, uh, no, I'm gonna be right there. Where are, we, where are we going for lunch? Don't say Olive Garden again. I'm gonna punch you in the head if you say Olive Garden. Oh, this is fun. Guys, I just got a new Tearaway Farside calendar. <laughs> turns out I'm into choking my wife during sex. <laughs> I was like, turns out I like to have my nipples burnt before I come. Uh, that's what I just imagine those people that just have that kind of fucking... Sooner or later, they'll just hit that fucking point. <laughs> Fantasize about killing children? <laughs> All right, I'll get back to the report. You know, you're in the fucking bathroom, you smell something, and a guy's just putting a cigarette out in his dick. <laughs> <laughs> just a little. Just, a, just a, maybe there's a feeling. <sighs> like, I'm alive. And then, and then you get so used to it, you just go, uh, hey, can I bum a Winston? And then <laughs> yeah. you slide it under the fucking. What are you doing? You're <laughs> acting like it's Friday. It's just Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> we don't burn our dicks till Thursday. That's a pre Friday celebration. 
Someone didn't get their run in before work. That's all, they're always talking about either just like getting a run in, and then that was like the joke. Just they, running before work. They run before work to yes. uh, push the anxiety away? It's almost when you think about it, this generation sort of does deserve the apocalypse. Right. Because of all like with like Twitter and all this shit and all the bankers, it's like, yeah, let's strip it back down to zero. And well, that's what Fight Club was basically about, just like forcing people the reset. to go back to being men again. Yeah, but I almost feel like, you know what's so funny is we always, like, we live in New York and we always shit on people in the middle of the country, like, look at these dumb yeah. Midwestern yokels. They're going to be the ones that run shit if the yeah, apocalypse good. happens. They know how to farm, how Preppers. to build an engine. Country Boy Will Survive, that was that fucking song. Yeah, there it is. Perfect timing. We came up with the song I was talking about. Lou Reed. <laughs> Satellite of Love. <laughs> Dan Soto, you're fucking hysterical, dude. dude you're the best. Yeah, thanks so much for having me, guys. Pull that when he says that, and we'll use that as a promo. Okay. Let's see what fucking Dan Soto says about Ron Bennington. You're the bu best. Boom. Get it, fuckers? Done. That's coming from like a funny shit. man. Like that shit, you assholes? Yeah. Huh? Huh? <laughs> fucking like, satisfied? Guess who's saying it? Now no, fucking write Soda. something bad to me. <laughs> 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 Guy code Wednesdays 11 go to mtv.com but uh the stand tonight and Saturday uh, Saturday 8 and 10 with the lights on doing it with the lights on <laughs> weird yeah yeah if you want to see facial uh, <laughs> facial movement or i don't know uh, maybe stage presence i think that's what they call it yeah <laughs> the stand. Well, you know you can also go all right anything we need to plug chris are we done we're good to go uh, that's the uh, Dubai show. Donk. And he's like, hey. Yeah. I just assume he does his black guy voice. Yeah. Hey. Hey. hey, man. That's a good black guy voice. I got a little scared. <laughs> yeah. Hey, man. We were just uh, talking about the cupcake, which I believe was a marketing incident, by the way. That, you know, oh, I'll, I'll make out with you while we eat a cupcake together. Um, and Is that now, what they did? Yeah. Oh, it was the cake, I thought. Was it cake or was he, it actual cupcake? He rubbed cupcake? the cupcake in his face, uh, and then they start to lick it off each other I, nice and slow. I'm not against... Here's the... Yeah, there it is. Yeah. Here's the thing. It, now you're getting... <laughs> now you're going too over the top. Right. Now it's becoming wedding celebration. Yeah. He looks like a... He looks like if they... Um, Casted a black dude to play Tiger Woods. Yeah, in a in a bio. He's got the red shirt. Yeah, too, and the black the hat. Nike shirt it's on. Sunday. Me right it's now. Sunday the Masters. He looks like Ray Lewis and the guy Ray Lewis killed. <laughs> <laughs> Ray Lewis and his victim yeah. kissing. Well, as soon as this was happening, I'm calling my dad on the phone. My dad's 87, so you know, change. Comes. We got a full package. We've got an opening comic. And a celebrity guest marriage counselor. Ron, fix I, I, Ron, I would go as far as to say is we are the David Lee Roth of that Van Halen. I like I like mm. what you're saying there. And their new replacements, a simple Sammy Hagar. I even got a better idea now. Yeah. Because it's you know this is the fucking '90s and there's changes happening all the time. <laughs> what I want to do it is with a gay couple. Oh, that's <laughs> progressive. Fucking, yeah. Shit. Mm. Uh, th Michael Sam is with a little white guy, which. <laughs> oh, just a little uh, tiny piece of. Uh, mm -mm. No, uh, not a fan. Uh, More in the biracial than the homosexuality. Yeah, yeah. yeah biracial of bothers me. I draw the line somewhere too. Yeah, but here's the thing. <laughs> I know Michael Sam is always fucking teasing him about dick size. I know he's just fucking laying his hog out, right, and fucking wrapping it around that little white dick. Do you, you think, like this? Do you think that's how they you. you? Do you think that's how they solve arguments? Yeah. He just slowly goes for a zipper. I think he just grabs he's his like, throat. I told you <laughs> the sconces can't. Ladies and gentlemen, Ron and Fez on Raw Dog, Sirius XM Comedy Hits, Channel 99. Yeah, buddy, it's, it's the Ron and Fez show. Look who is here. It was the breakout star of Moon Tower. Everybody was talking about your set down there, by the way. Uh, I mean, that's uh, that's one of those things where I don't ever believe it. Mm -hmm. I think people are messing with me when they tell me good job. I, I read on the Interbang, it was the industry buzz. Everyone's like, what this kid, he's popping. Oh. He's popping. 
That was, uh, it, I have to give all my thanks to Hannibal Burris for letting me open for him in front of a theater full of great comedy fans. Yeah, you, that's always fun, right? Yeah. Oh, my God. I'm slow to him. He watches Fox News 14 hours a day. Would that make his ears bleed? Yeah. Well, I was actually going, their balls are touching. I think their balls are touching. <laughs> I always like when, like, uh, when the people in the media take this clip and they're just so incensed by it. Yeah. They're like, what the? It's not even that big of a deal. Right. I think the cupcake's only offensive to diabetics. Yeah, exactly. Is that written for you? Yes. Good stuff. <laughs> He's got a writer today, and I'm really only like to keep up for it. Yeah. That's a pretty good, that's a fast writer. Yeah, he, yeah. Oh, that's good. He's just churning that's stuff out. Cigars up. and scotch, that was his two hobbies. But <laughs> here's uh, the, the beauty of this. We don't even know if this guy's going to play. We don't know if he's going to uh, make me, the team. I, As a 49er fan, I watch the Rams play twice a year. Mm -hmm. They play the 49ers, they'll play. <laughs> play. They, do, they do have, uh, actually, on the St. Louis Rams, uh, the son of professional wrestler Animal from the Road Warriors, whose shirt I'm wearing right now. Sure. Uh, James, Laur Rush. James Laurinaitis. Mm. He uh, plays linebacker. It was... Uh, it was one of those things where after the show, you're like, all right, well, all the other shows can suck. Yeah. Because this one was, you know, a, a packed Paramount Theater. Well, last time I think we saw each other was at that Voss and Bonnie thing. And then yeah. they're doing another one. You're replaced and I'm replaced. Yeah, we're, we're replaceable. How yeah. messed up is that? What they, they just said, and I go, well, you know, why aren't Soda and I coming back? And they said, I guess fell short is the best way to put it. <laughs> And I thought I thought you killed right. and I, 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 I thought you were phenomenal. Yeah. So this bullshit that I mean, Rich and Bonnie are yeah. replacing. I mean us. I'm signing shit for fucking two hours after you the show. What? You know what we should do? Yeah. Let's go find another celebrity comedy couple and do the same thing but with them. Do we got another one uh, out there? Who's another comedy couple that we can well, there's uh, Tom Segura, Christina Perzitsky. I love Segura. I would be honored Perfect. to open their show. All right, let them know the good news. Yeah, you Full let package. them know.